All right, so since these fish are so thick right now, we're just gonna chunk a bear hook out. Already, already on, on a jig head. That is ridiculous. <laughs> They're, oh my golly, jeez. That dude slammed that top water. Man, oh man, do we have a gorgeous day today, y'all. Wasn't even gonna come out. Woke up, look at my wind app, and it's just absolutely flat out here. It's, it's about noon right now, about 12, 15, 12, 30. Have no plans. I don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna catch some fish today, I know that. But just threw some rods on the boat, threw some tackle on here, and uh, we're gonna see what we can do today. We may ease on offshore a little bit, kind of see what the conditions look like, but this is the east end of Dolphin Island. This is where I launch at probably 80% of the time, especially when conditions are like this. But I think we're gonna have us a good day. I might start catching some bait, that way we'll have some just in case. But hope y'all enjoy it. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Let's get to fishing. Very nice. So I have had a few people ask what kind of fuel economy and numbers that I'm seeing on my blackjack since I've had it. And right now I've got a little bit of tab into the boat uh, just to keep the bow down from these small waves that we're running across. We're running about 30, 31 miles per hour, 3,400 RPMs, and we're getting almost 3.5 miles to the gallon right now. I'll show you real quick. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. So I think we're gonna start the day fishing a wreck here, if I can mark it on my, uh, my sonar. And I am gonna be utilizing my side scan unit here. We're pulling up on the spot, we're about 200 feet away. And this is the side scan here, and I use this a lot, finding structure, not so much looking for fish, maybe bull reds or cubby or something when I'm offshore, but this is a great tool to be able to find the structure, and I'll show y'all what I'm talking about here in just a second. You should see it come up here any second now. So if you're not familiar with side scan, this is our actual depth, nine and a half foot. This is how far it's looking out on both sides of the boat, 35 feet. And if we see any kind of structure, we'll see it on these spaces right here. And it's pretty obvious when you come across something. And there's our structure right there and right there. Marking a few fish on it, but that is obviously some kind of structure there. I think it's some kind of shipwreck. So we're gonna drop some, uh, some artificial baits down and see if we can get tight on something. I didn't stop and catch any live bait. I didn't wanna waste the time. Pretty sure we can get whatever's down there on an artificial bait. All right, well, since I've been sitting right here getting my bait ready, I've already seen about three dozen bluefish blowing up on top of the water over here. So there's a good chance I'm gonna get cut off, but it'll make for some good action anyways. Let's see if we can get one. Look at that, already! On top of the water. I mean, that was three seconds, maybe. Looks like a pretty good size one too. These guys make for a fun fight on some light tackle. There's one falling right behind them too. Get on up here. Oh yeah, like a speckled trout on steroids. That's about average size for our area there. He done destroyed my Z-Man, but at least I got my jig head back. Been here five seconds, first bait in the water. We already got us a fish. Maybe not the most desired species, but hey, it's a fish regardless. They are really bloody fish, but I hear they're not bad to eat as long as you bleed them. And so we might do that. He's already bleeding out, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick a knife in his gills and bleed him out. And uh, we might fry him up tonight because I personally never tried one before. I've always gone uh, off of what other, other people say. All right, we've got that fish dispatched. We're gonna go ahead and get this blood up off the deck. You gotta love a wash down hose. Let that stuff dry. Makes for a mess when you get back to the house. All right, we got us a paddle tail on now. Shouldn't take 
very long to get us a fish. We're just gonna rip it across the water. Look, they're already after it. That thing looks good too. All right. Ooh. Oh my gosh, there's a hundred of them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't break me. Don't cut me. Well, I guess we'll try and get three or four in the boat. Or at least until I get cut off. I'm really surprised I haven't already because these guys have got some gnarly teeth. I know one thing, they sure know how to make a mess. I'm sure y'all already know if you fish along the Gulf Coast, but if you don't, bluefish have some serious teeth and will take a finger off just like that. So you gotta be super careful when handling these fish. But we should be able to get some decent fillets off here. Go ahead and bleed them out and bring them. Just like so. Hit the wars down again. My leader's chafe, but I'm still gonna chunk it out. We're probably gonna lose this bait this time. Let's see, maybe if we can let it sink to the bottom. Oh, nope, not a chance. <laughs> Holy cow, look at all of them. You could probably, ch I could probably chunk a bear hook out and catch one right here. They have destroyed my bait. <laughs> no! <laughs> right there. Stay up, stay up. Get in the boat, get in the boat. Yeet! <laughs> oh my gosh, you can use a cane pole right here. <laughs> We're gonna chunk a bear hook out next time. Another nice little bluefish there. You know, nothing crazy about catching these guys. They're pretty much everywhere, but they sure make for some, some good action. I'm gonna try not to get my finger cut off here. Boom. There we go. All right, so since these fish are so thick right now, we're just gonna chunk a bear hook out there. I've kind of put one on that I don't really care if I lose it because we're only using 20 pound fluoro leader and if their teeth chafe it at all, it will be broke. But let's see if we can get us one on just a jig head real quick. Just kind of work it fast in the water. Oh, they're already on it. Look at them. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a Slim Jim or something or a gummy worm. Already, already on, on a jig head. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I need to go to casinos because these guys have not broke me off yet. So I'm pretty lucky right now, I must say. Oh my goodness. Come on. I've got them hooked really good too, right on the top of the nose. Let's see if we can get our bear hook fish in the boat. Come on, he's putting on a show for us. Yeet! <laughs> bear jig head bluefish. Gotta love it. Who needs bait? Ah, gotcha, buddy. <laughs> oh, I better not leave that in the water because I'll come up and hit it. Well, I would say we're eating good tonight, but honestly, don't know. So, if I don't really care for them, I know plenty of other people that will gladly take these fish. All right, so this might be the fastest way to lose $10 real quick, but we're going to chunk this popper out right here because this is pretty fun. I ain't going to lie. It would be even more fun watching them eat this thing. Oh, there they are on top of the water. <laughs> They're, oh my golly! Jeez! <laughs> that dude slammed that top water. I think it's another bluefish. He hit it so hard. No, that's a Spanish. That's a Spanish mackerel, y'all. Not a bad one either. He's foul hooked. Oh yeah! Who would have thought the uh, the Spanish would have hit the top water? 
<laughs> really not a bad one at all. I'm actually kind of skeptical about touching them. It's a good way to get some hooks in you when they're foul hooked like that. You gotta be extra careful along with their teeth. Because I have been bit by a mackerel before, a king mackerel to be exact, and it wasn't fun because he cut two of my tendons in my hand, had a splint for uh, two months. There we go. Just got one hook in them now. There we go. Boom. Well, that was freaking cool. I think I have mentioned it on the channel before, but sometimes juvenile king mackerel will look very similar to Spanish. They may be a little bit darker, but two ways you can tell is by looking at their lateral line right there. It has a, a small drop in it, and a king will be a, a very distinct drop in that lateral line. And also Spanish have a, a black tip on their dorsal fin there. So that's two good ways you can tell. All right, boom, 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 three, two, one. They're all, they're all on it. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy cow, these suckers are aggressive. Let's see if we can do it again. Bunch of spade fish down there. Holy cow! All right, they finally got my top water, but it's floating. Come on, don't, don't get it. No, no, I gotta get it back. <laughs> oh. Let's see, I gotta, gotta get my top water. At least I got it back, I think. Yeah. Aha. Look at there. How often do you break off and then get your, your bait back? All right, so we pulled up to a near shore rig here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna chunk out some poppers. Not really after meat today. Just trying to get some exciting action and poppers is a good way to do it. You never know what's gonna hit a popper, especially out here. So we're probably just gonna bounce around a few different rigs. Throw these poppers out. Hopefully get on something that'll bend this pretty stout pin rod here. Oh, oh, big blow up, big blow up. Come on. I don't know what that was. It was a good blow up. Oh, oh, it's a shark. He's right behind it. Two of them. No, that's Cobia. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh, it's Cobia. Oh, I gotta get a swim bait in the water. Ah. I gotta be quick. All right, we're right here where I seen him at. Throw up close to that rig. They may have went back to the rig. All right, y'all, we are back at the house. Now it's the next afternoon, actually. Didn't quite have enough time to get home and wash the boat and clean the fish and do a catch, clean and cook. So it's the next day. And so I did bleed these fish out, as y'all seen on the boat. And I also went ahead and took an extra step and gutted these fish right here. And I highly recommend doing that if you don't plan on cleaning your fish uh, that afternoon or even possibly the next day. And so I did that, loaded some ice on them, and here we are. And we are gonna be using our seven inch sword fillet knife as always. I'll tell y'all what, if y'all looking for a great gift for a son, father, or a friend, or anybody for Christmas or a birthday, and they like to clean fish or really anything y'all should definitely go check them out i love the grip on these knives and they stay sharp and so we're going to go ahead and get this fish cleaned up real quick these fish are super easy to clean it doesn't take much just like that and we're done and the meat doesn't look horrible i gotta say i mean it's got a little bit of a bloodline going down the middle Let's see, we'll go ahead and take the skin off this fella here. It is a little mushy, and part of that may be because uh, I didn't clean them the, the same day. But I don't think it'll be too bad. 
Let's see what the back side looks like. Oh yeah, so as most fish have a, a bloodline going down the middle, we're gonna go ahead and take this stomach off here. All right, that's gone. We're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna cut right down on both sides of this bloodline here. Got to be real careful with this meat because it is a little soft. Let's see, just like so. You do, I guess, waste a little bit of meat, but you definitely don't want to be eating this red right here. That's what makes fish taste fishy. So that is going to be discarded, and we are left with two little slivers there. We're probably just going to fry these up. You know, it's hard to go wrong with fried fish. And so even if I don't care for how this fish tastes right here, I know plenty of other people that will take the rest of these fish that I'm about to clean up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and I'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, so we are in the kitchen now and I've got the fillets here on the table. See if y'all can get a good look at it. I've seen worse fillets. I've eaten, you know, uh, some darker fish, you know, like king mackerel and um, spade fish. And it kind of looks very similar to spade fish except they're a little more narrow fillets, of course, and I left a little bit of red in there. I could probably trim that off, but I think I changed my mind. We're not gonna fry these fish. We're just gonna put them on this skillet here with some butter and some, let's see, we got some Everglades fish and chicken, some garlic and salt, but I feel like frying these fish, we really wouldn't get a good uh, taste or feel of how the fish really tastes. So we're just gonna throw it on the skillet and see how it works out and She's gonna try it as well. I'll be honest, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I've never tried it before. I've always heard people say that it's not that great, but they also probably don't bleed and gut the fish. And so I hate going off by what other people say. I gotta try it for myself. So we're fixing to cook it and try it. And if we don't like it, we might just have to go out and eat at a restaurant because we don't have anything else planned to eat. I'm not gonna put a whole lot of seasoning on these fish, but we are gonna put enough just a little dab, not too much. What? The meat does not look very pretty. Yeah, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> There's people out there starving and we're complaining about fresh fish. I'm not complaining. <laughs> all right, well our fish is done. I'm not gonna lie, it does smell pretty good and it doesn't look bad at all. What do you think? Okay, she says it looks good, smells good. It's gotta be good, right? But I'm not gonna put on a front or anything. I'm gonna be brutally honest, if this is trash, then uh, I'm definitely gonna let you know. That way y'all don't waste your time. But let's go ahead and get us a bite here. You yeah. All right, well, here we go. It's kind of white on the inside. It don't look bad, as we said. Let's go ahead and try it, same time. We'll spit it out. the whole thing in your It's not bad. I will say that. Uh, very little fishy taste, but that's kind of expected for, uh, you know, to be cooking on the stove top like that. I'm sure if we would have fried this fish, probably wouldn't taste it at all, especially if you're, if you're a ketchup fan with your fried fish, but let's get another bite just to make sure. Also, I didn't put a whole lot of seasoning on this fish, but I can tell you one thing, if she likes or if she'll eat it, it's not bad at all. I'd, I'd probably give it a, I'd probably give it a five out of 10. What would you rate it? Five or six. All those years I called bluefish trash fish. We could have been throwing them in the box and eating it. Mm. I wish we were eating Kobe right now, but uh, you know, those fish did not want to cooperate with me out there. Uh, I spent about 30 minutes at that rig trying to catch those two fish that y'all seen come up after my popper. And they were gone and conditions changed, so we pretty much just caught it a day. But had a good time out there regardless. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Nice little short trip out there with some pretty weather. If y'all want to see any other videos just like this one, y'all can go check these out right here. And as always, we will see y'all back out on the water next time.